Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel for another video in my teacher series videos that I'm going to be doing on my channel. So if you saw my first video, um, you know that this is the second part of my video where I talked about showing you all my student data binder, a uh, small group binder all in one together. And so I've decided to use the classic size for this one um, because I didn't want to have two big binders. I wanted to have something small, something that I can keep right at my small group table at all times, something I can walk around the classroom with that would be very comfortable for me to handle even when I go to data chat meetings, something you know that is easy and portable. And plus I love this little case that comes with it that I purchased that came with it when I did buy my first, uh, very first teacher planner, I was able to get the deluxe covers for free with them. It was a promotion they had years ago. So I love this. It's easy. You can slide different things into the pockets. It's very nice. It also has the, um, pin loop here for you to do a pin loop. So today's video, I want to go ahead and show you all how I have customized this planner for my use. So I bought this planner for the 2020, 2021 school year and decided that it was too small for my regular daily planning. So I stopped using it a couple of months right into it. So I had so many pages that I did not use, but for the 2021, 2022 school year, I decided that I wanted to repurpose it and use it to make a small group binder. So I have it stuck in here and I just love the way the colors and everything are contrasted together. So I'm gonna move the cover off so we can go ahead and just jump into the planner and I'm gonna take the dashboard off there too. All right, so this is the planner. I kept most of the pages pretty much the same in here, but there are a couple of things that I did do to customize it. I haven't written my name or anything in here because we're gonna do that together. Um, so it has the name. I still kept that page intact. I still have the calendar here, um, the reference notes page here. I'm still keeping that, but for this page here, it normally had like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I just took some white out, um, or you know, well, correction tape. And I love to use this. It is so easy. I got it from Office Depot. You just take the cap off and you can just run it down. It helps you to hold it steady and in place. So I just ran down those because the dates are still the same day. Every August has a, you know, a first day and a 31st day. So I want to repurpose it so that I can use it for this school year and write in what I need to write in. Normally these dates are the Saturdays and Sunday dates, but I'm not worried about that. I just want to be able to write in important dates like um, RTI meetings that I may have or important testing dates that I might need to do and things like that for my data binder. So as my year at a glance for that. So that's how I plan on using that. And then I also kept this page here, the top priorities page. This is a page that I normally don't use that much, but I feel like it would be great to use for students and um, data, keeping data. So my top priorities for my students or for my groups that month, um, I'm not gonna use this as student birthday. So I'll probably end up covering this up with washi and just writing a quote or something on here. But definitely I wanna make sure I have my goals and my focuses for each month. Um, and so this will start in August. So I kept it like this. And then normally on this other side, you would have the calendar part. So I, what I have done is I pre-sized a heavyweight paper and this is by the Astro Bright. So I don't know if, um, so some of you may be curious about the paper that I use and it is this Astro Bright Premium Inkjet Laser Jet Printer. And you see the weight is a medium weight, it's 28 pounds. And they do have one that's a little bit heavier. It's a 32 pounds. I was looking to get that one, but this one works just fine. So if you're looking for a good weighted paper for you to make your own custom planner and you don't want any bleed through or anything, and you wanna be able to print on like both sides, definitely look into getting 
a premium heavyweight type of paper and this paper has worked fantastic so i already cut it down to size using my um regular hand uh, straight edge cutter here it works perfectly for i got the measurements already like marked down on here for my um if you see those lines there i got it already marked down for where i need to cut it down um cut down a regular eight and a half by 11 paper to fit this classic size and of course i use my happy planner punch to punch out the pages because it already has the a big size and then the classic size markings already on there so i cut out some pages to size already for me and then i just simply glue that so what i decided to do was to keep this dashboard part here glue a paper on this side and then glue another sheet on this side because this side is the side that has the october goals so we're going to do that real quick on camera so you can see how easy it works out you know normally we would go ahead and line up the paper and then glue it on there it's it works out so much easier like this so you just take your regular elmer's glue and i like to just do straight lines here so that i can like make sure that i got enough glue on these uh, edges here so i just go straight on across straight out in between the punch part go straight on across and then line things up and it is perfect and then i like to just press it down on my desk like this and move it around to kind of get it to smooth itself out and then i do the next one Now on this part here, I do kind of try to go over this part just a little bit because um, it's that plastic part and I really want the glue to, to stay to that. But I just go from end to end of the paper. And I line it up again. Push, just pressing it down lightly the Elmer's glue this type of glue is so forgiving I absolutely love how forgiving it is so even if you mess up you can kind of like quickly slide your paper around and so that's pretty much all I did to repurpose my dashboards and then for my planner so instead of the pages being like you know like that so I've swapped it and put, this is my dashboard page. Uh, this is the dashboard and this going into the page, like how it would kind of normally be in your, um, in your planner. So that's what I've done to the dashboards. So now let's get into these customized papers. So on my previous video, I also, I told you all that I've used Joey Udovich. I hope I, I, I said her name right, but she has the ultimate teacher binder and I will put the link in the description box if you want to sit, uh, go through it. I believe it's on sale right now, but I purchased it like three years ago and I've always used certain pages out of it just you know just because i like those pages but this time i decided to really create like a full binder with it for my teacher planner and for my small group binder um, and every year once you do the first purchase every single year she automatically updates it so you only have to buy it one time a one-time investment will last you for a long time so for the first month in august typically most teachers we try to go ahead and set up our introductory um our introductory uh, 
levels of where our students are. So we do like a state standardized, uh, we do like a baseline type of test. So I went on ahead and printed out this sheet of paper and in order to get it to size down here, I sized it down to 85% on my printer. So when you go and print, there's an option there when you look at your print options that says 100%. So you just click on that and then you adjust it. And so I adjusted it to 85% and it fit perfectly for me to be able to punch it and put it in here and it'd be big enough for me to write on. So the first section here in August, I wanna make sure that I get all of my baseline testing done, see what my students' overall scores were, where they may need to be improved and what mastery level they are at. So I wanna do that for, um, for ELA and I also wanna do that for math. But then once I do that, I'm gonna take that information and then I'm gonna go ahead and form my groups, form centers, specific centers that I wanna to do to target those um, different skills. So I've printed out the skills group focus page and also the reading rotation tracker where I want to also help my students um, with their reading. So the first rotation, the second rotation, third rotation, and the fourth rotation. And each time we'll be doing something different with that particular um, rotation, with that particular book. So we'll focus on something different every time we kind of read that book. And I love how it's all empty and you can just put in your groups. I like to use group colors because it's easier for me at the primary level for my kids to, you know, remember their color. And I try to keep everything, you know, all the same for them. So those are the pages that I put for the month of August. And then I just went on ahead and just found a bunch of filler paper that I've had. How many times do we buy filler paper and we never hardly use it? So I put some filler paper here so I can just go around and do daily notes when I am um, doing, uh, doing observations or having small group with the kids. I can just jot down that. Now she does have a daily observation page. If you want to print that out, you can always print that out. That will work out fine. So I just put a couple of those pages in there and then boom, I move on to September and, um, and then for the month of September, I want to focus on my uh, centers and my small groups. Um, so I put some more pages like that. And I've gone ahead and filled that out for the first three months because I don't like to do this too, too far in advance because I may want to do something different. And the, uh, the, the uh, package that I bought has so many different variations for small groups and things like that, that I, I do want to see how I can customize those and use those differently. But for the first, you know, three months out of the teaching year, I want to go ahead and just keep it the same. I love how it has the topic or I can write the skill and then the standard that it matches and then the ideas for students that are below level at grade level and all of that so this helps greatly with differentiating instruction and it just takes the guesswork out of everything and then you have something on hand that says look this is what i've done this is what i've tried you know and these are the kids this is how they're going along with it and you have your your notes there so that's how i've uh, gone ahead and put together this particular binder and i found a bunch of different cute like little different filler papers like this one has dot lines in it and in january i put another um set of standardized testing because that'll be my midway um, point where i'll check in again and then i'll put another one there in about april for that so um so i have those pages there so for the month of february so i have this paper here to do my notes and observations for the kids for february and march and then in april i have like daily to do's which i think is so great because by this time you you're really you know should have gotten your kids where you want them to be and you just have those just little bullet point things that you just want to work on you know at that time so this is my customized teacher planner definitely check out her um her uh joey udovich i hope i'm saying it right definitely check out the ultimate teacher planner bundle it has definitely been something that has really been a great uh lifesaver for me for for my planning and for helping me to stay organized and get things in order and i'm going to be using this checklist page here 
just to track the different um, skills and things that I am going to be working on with each one of my students and track the standards and to see how they have met them. This is something that I really want to focus on this year and just making sure that my students are on track and learning everything that they need to, to know. So then the next section I have here, I um, the next section after the class checklist where I'll be tracking the standards is basically a small group breakdown. So I only printed out a couple of pages here and I printed them um, front and back. So I printed out these pages so that I can go ahead and just jot down what small groups I want to do. And it's so simple and basic. It just has the students' names and notes. So um, if I need to maybe change up a small group, maybe I can write notes like, hey, these students aren't working well together. This one is a, a low skill, or, or maybe I need to change this student or that student. So I can see how I've changed and evolved my small groups throughout the year. So I did a couple of pages of those. And then the next section here is my RTI, which is very important to me. Um, to be able to track and collect data. I love, love, love this page. It is like having your students like IEP, like right here in the snapshot for you, just write it down, put in their name. And this is also editable. So if you already know who your students are um, and you haven't already done what I've done um, and you want to choose this bundle, you can type in your student's name, their grade, the teacher name, the area concern, the focus, you can type in all of that stuff. But I've chosen to go ahead and write everything in and I'm gonna be writing this in in pencil, the dates that you've assessed them, what you've assessed them on their goals parent contact information notify them like this is like your entire snapshot right here so you'll know um, what you're doing for that student so I printed out about five of these um, and on the back of it it's it'll be like my students RTI plan whether I put them in a group with someone or whether I'm doing it one-on-one, um, -on -one, I have it, the lessons are, will be focused, um, the dates and the activities, was it effective, the reason why, this is just a fantastic page. Like, I mean, it. I was just blown away when I saw this. <laughs> And then I have the standard based analysis, my student data still for this same particular student. I'll write in their name and write in the different things that we focus on, their standards, where they are, any interventions, something worked, didn't work. So I just love that. So I've done that, as you can see, for about five students. So this will be my specific RTI section. And then this last section here is my teacher resources. Um, I, I recently graduated and well this month july and uh well i actually graduated earlier in the year but the graduation <laughs> is in july with my master's degree in specialized curriculum instruction and assessment and i learned so many different strategies these are actually my notes from my class that i put in here of things that i want to um, remember um, take note of and actually use with my students uh oh some of the pages got a little crumbled up so, and I especially love um, the mind's eye that we talked about and the habits of the mind. Like, I love this. This was so phenomenal to me. And so I wrote this down. And so this will be things to help me um, and strategies that I've learned over the years um, to help me as I formulate my um, small groups. And then I just have a little pocket here for if, you know, if there's anything that I need to put in here or stickers, maybe I'll be putting in here to reward students um, or give out um, little tickets because I plan on doing like, um, the bucket filling tickets. So I'll probably stick those in there. And while we're in small group, if they're doing something good or whatever, I can give them a sticker or give them a bucket fill of coupon. So this is my customized student data binder. And I think it came out fantastic. And so to finish up this video, I know a lot of you do not have like a Cricut machine or anything and you want to have like your name. Maybe you're not good with, you know, hand lettering and things like that because I'm not that great at hand lettering. But I found these at Hobby Lobby by the Paper Studio and I got them when they were like 30% off or it was like 30 or 40% off. So there were just a few bucks for me to spend. And so I thought it would be great to go ahead and put 
um, my name using these letters and maybe this will be something that you might want to do as well um, if you want to have your name like nicely written you can use this like so many times throughout you know so many years to write your name in your planner without you know actually having you know a Cricut machine to do it with those nice vinyl stickers so I hope it won't be too big here for me to do. I wanted to put Mrs. Brown in here, but I may have to put just G Brown on the on here. I'm not quite sure, but I really did want to put uh Mrs. Brown on here. But I think like the letters may be like too wide for this here. So, but these letters are very easily to manipulate. So, but oh, look at that. Might need to grab my tweezers or my little exacto knife it works really well to like place things so I'll probably just put brown just put it B And then I like to go ahead and try to make sure that it's like all centered. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the N down, lowercase N, if I can find it. That way I, I know my letters are kind of like spaced out pretty good. So I just stick it on the, stick it on the edge here of my I think I want to bring it up just a bit. I don't mind a little hangover like how the how the um, the the B is. Then I'm gonna put the next one. Then I'm gonna work this way. Hopefully, it's enough space. I didn't push it down too hard. <laughs> because I didn't want it to, to not all fit. So I might have to move that in over. Yeah, and you see how I kind of have it where it will connect just the, connect to that, to the top of the end where it kind of looks like it's all in one, that's a, another little uh, tip or trick you can definitely do when you're placing your, your letters down. Come on, don't rip on me. There we go. So I think that's a good spot. Then I'll grab the W back and then Try to place that, oops, try to place that all together there. And okay. And then the O. Oh, now I think I got it a little too far out. 
oh boy that is just this is like the thing it is like trial and error another thing you can do is kind of get your letters already like on wax paper I've also done that before in the past where I've placed my letters on wax paper and then well it didn't look too bad but here is a definite alternative that you can do um, to create your name and put your name on there and these numbers are a little too big I would have put my room number but I'll probably just write all that in um, just by my hand and put the address and everything on there so that is it for this video definitely let me know if you enjoyed this video I do have a couple more videos coming up where I will be going through some pre-planning with my teaching teacher binder and I will be doing a before and after classroom um, set up a couple of different projects that I'm doing to uh, and decor projects that I'm doing for my classroom that I'm going to be showing you all um, and I've been customizing everything and using a lot of products through Teachers Pay Teacher. I love, I'm a teacher and I love supporting teachers. So I, I definitely believe in that. So definitely follow me as I'm on my journey of the 2021-2022 school year. Thank y'all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe so that you won't miss any of my upcoming videos in this teaching series. See y'all later. Bye-bye.